And you had Michael Dukakis go, I'm above this. I'm not going to respond to that. I mean, you've written uh, 41's uh, biography, you know. By the time Dukakis finally started responding to those attacks, he had lost like 20 points in the poll. His 20-point lead was evaporated. And now you've got the Biden people sitting back talking Bidenomics while his son's being trashed and while his age is being trashed. And here you have, I just want to repeat for you because I know you're a historian. And I'm sure you never knew this. Donald Trump says he ran against George W. Bush in the primary and beating. Ran in 2016, right. ran against Barack Obama in the general election. Nobody thought they could beat him, but he beat him. Ran against Barack Obama in 2020 and beat him, no matter what the press and the pundits say. This is a guy who is terribly confused. And again, we don't hear that so much because the Biden campaign is playing by Marcus of Queensberry rules. I'll say one thing. The, one of the great primary races ever would have been George W. Bush versus Donald Trump. That would have been oh. a cage match. Uh, uh, can you, can't yeah. you imagine? If you, excuse me for cutting you off. Yeah. That would have been over in five minutes. Like, Donald Trump would have yeah. started talking, and George W. Bush would have looked at him, and he would have gone, eh, and I'm the one that's supposed to be dumb. <laughs> what are you talking about? And he would yeah. have gutted him. George W. Bush yeah. would have finished Donald Trump's campaign in five minutes. But go ahead. No, I, I think that, too. I, th I think that George W. Bush is the one Republican who could have uh, undercut this populism. He worried about the populism. Uh, he talks about uh, how mm -hmm. uh, what happened late in his administration helped create the conditions for this. Uh, he's he's clear eyed about it. But um, look, I think the thing that worries me the most is not what Trump says when he's confused, but what he says, what he says when he's not. And there's this series of incredibly uh, sulfurous, uh, unconstitutional, anti-democratic uh, assertions that he's making about what he wants to do if, in fact, he returns to power, which is a entirely plausible possibility. And so uh, the focus, it seems to me, of all of us, the task of citizenship should be, what is he saying? What does he want to do? And we're talking about somebody, and I just, I, I, we can't say this enough, right? It's like the daily office. Uh, it's like morning prayer. We should just always say this. There was a mob attacking the capital of the United States, something that did not happen in 1860-61, but it happened in 2021 because of this biz bizarre and yet all too real political power and reach that Donald Trump has. And we can wish it away, but that won't make any difference at all. I had a seventh grade history teacher who said, if ifs, ands, and buts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. You know, and, and so we could say, but, 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 doesn't matter, right? This is a real political, constitutional unfolding crisis and it it's tiring I mean, I mean who wants to wake up and think about donald trump more except for donald trump of course well uh, john if i this, can interrupt this is you what we here, got this is talk, our task i want to talk a couple of specifics with you john first of all he's talking yeah. about the execution of mark milley uh, the chairman of the joint chiefs of staff said he would have been executed in prior days simply because Mark Milley wasn't going along with his plan to overthrow the government. And, and yesterday he ranted that he was going to take over NBC and MSNBC if he won the 2024 election. He was ranting on, on uh, his social media post and claimed the networks are the enemy of the people. This is, of Here course, a again. phrase that Stalin used that after Stalin died, Khrushchev yep. said it was such a dangerous political in the Soviet Union, such a dangerous political phrase that he outlawed the use of it. And he said that in the NBC and MSNBC should be investigated for country-threatening treason. So here we go, John. In two days, he threatens to, he says the, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs probably should be executed. And then he says that the news network that, uh, that is most critical of him should be taken off the air.
This is not a reach. I could go back and talk about Nazi Germany, and I do it. I do it without any concerns whatsoever. And if people can't start drawing the parallels, well, you're just stupid, or you have your head in the sand, or you're one of them. Um, but I'd rather look at Orban. And what's going on today in Hungary, because yeah. what he's done, it's been systematic. He started with the, the public, sort of the NPR stations, took them over. They became voices and arms of the state. Then he started going over uh, uh, the newspapers. He had he, he basically he regulated or, or taxed one independent newspaper after another independent newspaper out of existence. One hundred percent of the newspapers there are basically state-run, state-owned through these kind of third-party uh, supporters, these industries. And he's done it with broadcast, too. Eighty percent uh, are basically Orban's uh, deal. He's, he's, got, he's got almost complete control over the news media. They send out the message for them to follow, and they all follow it. There is no freedom of speech in Hungary. And so... Does do do I think that Donald Trump's going to be allowed to line people up against the wall and shoot them? No, he'd like to. And no doubt. I know him and I've known him for a long time. And, and we can see this. He would like to. He's not going to be allowed to. But if he says, I'm going to take the FEC and I'm going to bring it into the White House and I'm going to decide who's going to be on TV and who's not going to be on TV. Believe him. That is something that Republicans, 50 percent of Americans are supporting him right now, despite the fact he steals nuclear secrets and he steals war plans and he says he's going to terminate the Constitution. So, sure, they'll let him shut down TV stations. That's where we are. Yeah, and that, to terminate the Constitution, that's, uh, that's the key phrase here, right? That's what he says he wants to do. And then there are the folks who say that people like the two of us, or all of us, are, you know, we, we take him too literally, not seriously. Where did we start? A mob attacked the capital of the United States to overturn a free and fair election. The president of the United States pressured officials in the various states to find him votes so that he would win. So, that's not hyperbole, right? That's not cable news, liberal fury in the morning. It's just true. And if you can't handle that, then the entire experiment is at risk. And the entire experiment is at risk. And that may sound overly grand or dramatic. No. Nope. But as you were saying, it's just the case. And I don't think we do, we do ourselves no favors, whatever, in pretending that these are not live, use a fancy word, illiberal, anti-democratic, unconstitutional forces that he, Donald Trump, embodies, promulgates. And this whole election, the, the Constitution, think about this, the Constitution, if the numbers are even remotely true, is going to come down to a couple of hundred thousand people in five states, right? That's that's where we are. And so to some extent, the appeal has to be. If you are one of these folks in Michigan, in Pennsylvania, in Arizona, uh, if you're there, think about it. Do you want to terminate the Constitution? And if you do, you better be sure your team's always going to be in power. Because the yeah. point of law is that it protects you from me and me from you. And the strong always become the weak.